All right, so this is a recording of my last project for the Arduino student kit. This is uh, lesson number 10, so the final one where you're supposed to put together the last five lessons of the student kit into one to make a smart greenhouse. Uh, so the requirements of the smart greenhouse was to have at least two LEDs, which were wired through resistors, at least two manual controls to activate certain tasks, um, such as push buttons, potentiometers, or the ability to input a command through a serial monitor. Um, I get to incorporate a servo while through a 100U of capacitator, at least one digital and analog pin, at least two sensors, such as the light and temperature sensors, uh, the piezo buzzer to sound the alarm, and at least one call function. So right here is my um, Arduino breadboard. Um, so as you can see, I have three LEDs. I have the red, the yellow, and the blue. I have the two manual controls, one which you can see, which is the push button right here. And the second is actually the serial monitor where I input a command, which is going to be more on the screen. Um, then I have incorporated a servo, which is this little robot right here. The capacitator is this little guy. Um, at least one digital and analog pin. As you can see, these will at least be the analog pins that are very obvious. Most of these are digital. Um, I don't believe any of those are, um, the ones that are plugged into analog are output into analog. Um, then we have at least the two sensors, the light one, which is off to the side here, off with the long wires, and the temperature one, which is a little black one right over here next to the blue LED. Um, we have the piezo buzzer, which will sound the alarm, and we have at least one call function. Um, we have several call functions. So I'm going to open up my Arduino project right now here on the screen. All right, so we have named all of the pins um, to declare, obviously, where they're all plugged in. Um, we have declared variables to store all those amounts from the light amounts, the temperature values, the angles of the servo, um, and other commands for buzzers and such. Then we have attached our servo sprinkler, um, as well as set all of the pin modes. So all of the pins for the buzzer, all of the LEDs are outputs. The only thing that's an input pin is going to be the button to let us know that it's going to be switching cases. Um, we are going to be having a serial print, so we have a serial begin typed in. We have attached the sprinkler and had it start at angle zero, just so that it starts from the beginning. All right, so let's go ahead. I'll plug this guy in. It's already doing stuff, but should stop. There we go. So that's it. The, the way that the servo just moved, it's because it reset itself to zero. Um, so when we look into the loop function, we have um, the digital read of the button pin for high. Um, for four times, it creates the command. So basically what I did there is so that I could press the button up to four times, but on the fourth time it resets back to zero. That's going to be all for my switch cases. So I'm going to have a case zero, a one, and a two. Um, zero, one, two, and then it'll turn back to uh, zero. Let's see, and then um, this is where our switches start. So case zero of the switch is going to be just the beginning function, so that's what we're seeing right now. It's just printing data, and I'm going to open up the serial monitor so it's noticeable. So as we can see, it's printing the data, it's taking in the incoming light, it's taking the temperature of the room, and it's saying which case it's in, which is currently zero, which is listed under button. And as you can see over here, I have, this is my serial input. This is one of those uh, manual controls I was talking about. So if I type in A into the serial right, it'll come out as uh, alert, alert, alert. And if I go ah, uh, it'll alert me a bunch of times. So then I'll go ahead and press the button. And as you can see, it's changed to button one, which is case number one, where it's printing the data, which is all of this, and it's taking the temperature reading. Now, this is a callback function. So if we go down to temperature, this is the function that it is. We have, if the temperature is less than 75, the red LED will glow, which is doing it off and on. And if it's above 75, that's when the buzzer pin will, will um, blip, apparently, um, or 
it will blip and then we have the temperature alert that goes off that just means that it's above 75. We can obviously change that a little bit since it's going off a lot right now. So let's say if the temperature is above 76, it'll do that. So we'll change that really quick and re-upload it just so we could see what it looks like without the buzzer going off. So it's just going to update really quick. Let's look back on the serial monitor so everything reset. Now if I press the button, the red light will just stay on. <laughs> unless it becomes above 76, which it did briefly. But right now the temperature in the room is at a 75 to 74, as you could see on the screen here. Slightly heating 76 every so often, but that's when the buzzer beeps. All right, there it goes again. Now the next thing we see over here is case two. So we're gonna press the button again. And as you could see here on the screen, we are now on button two, so it's case two. And case two is just printing data, as you could see here, and it's taking the light reading. So if we look back to the callback function for light reading right over here, we have if the light amount is less than 80, then the red and yellow lights are off, the blue light will be on uh, high and it'll be blinking and the splinker will go. So what this is essentially trying to simulate is that if it is um, nighttime, if the light is less than 80, then the sprinklers go off in this you know smart greenhouse so that um, it waters without evaporating in the bright light. Otherwise, if it's less than 200 but above 80, I have the yellow light just kind of blinking to indicate the sun, um, so it's going to be at a slow flash. And then otherwise, if it's above 200, um, and if it's above 200, the yellow light will just stay on. So if we take a look again at the serial monitor, the light reading is currently at 300. You could see that the yellow light is just on without any without any blinking. Now let's see if we can get less than 200. I'm just going to put my hand, oh this is the sensor here, so I'm just going to put my hand over it to kind of cover. Oh, a little too much. Let's see, less than 200. There we go. So the yellow light's blinking now. This is just kind of simulate like that the sun is setting, so it's getting ready to sprinkle. And then I'm just going to completely cover it. And as you could see here, it's below 80. So this little servo here, is now sprinkling and the blue light is flashing to indicate that it's on its sprinkler function. The yellow lights are now turned off. But now since I let it back go and it's daytime here, it's just flashing yellow that it's not doing anything. Now if we press this button one more time, it just resets back to zero and that's what we have going on that it just starts doing that. So again, this is my smart greenhouse. This is lesson 10. We've incorporated um, We've incorporated uh, the alarm, the um, serial monitor read, the button, the LEDs, all of the resistors that are wired through, and all of the all of the um, code that I've written here to make that happen, which was a really fun project because the only video I have otherwise of my Arduino student kit is my unboxing, which I didn't even know what the jumper cables were or what resistors were. Um, I think the only thing I was able to really recognize were the LEDs, and here I am with the most complex thing I have ever made.